Uh, and it goes on and says that we need to hone our fear, right? Which is the first step in, in, in facing it. Um, facing it is the key to overcome it. You know, just like I said, we need to hone our fear. You know, first of all, if you have fears, you need to know the fears that you have. You know, you, you cannot overcome what you don't uh, what you don't accept, right? You cannot uh, grow from where you you are not, right? You need to uh, you need to what well, we use the word. You need to be uh, brutally honest with yourself. You need to be brutally honest with yourself and know this and these and these are the fears in my life. These and these are the are the limitations in my life because once you are brutally honest, you can enumerate them. Then you don't know what to work on, right? So. Yeah, so it, it goes on and tells us that, simply put, the sharper our array of communication skills, the more successful we'll become in virtually every endeavor of life, you know? And I was listening to, who else was I listening to yesterday? Oh, I was listening to, what's her name? Indira Noe, you know, you know the lady? Indira, the Indian uh, CEO of Pepsi. Have you heard that before? Yeah, Have you heard that. of Indira before? Yeah, she used to, she's the first uh, woman CEO of Pepsi, Coke, Pepsi, you know, and it's pretty popular out there. You know, I was just, she was just, I was just listening to her yesterday, uh, and she was talking about the fact that, you know, um, no, was she the one saying that, or who else was saying that? Whoever, she, I was listening to a couple of people yesterday, you know, uh, they were talking about, yeah, to be good in your communication skills, why? Right? It's going to take you places. I mean, if you if you want to be a leader, then you have to be able to communicate. Yes, she was once saying it. I wish I could just lay my hands on what she said. It's one of the papers around here. But it says, you know, you, you cannot be a leader if you cannot communicate. I mean, communication is one of the essential tools of a leader, right? So if you're going to lead any in any sector, any place of life, you must be able to communicate, right? So... Uh, what we're talking about here is what well, you all might call a, a leadership class. Because if I'm good at communication, then I can serve my message. Then they can follow me. Because a followership, leadership, is all about influence. If I can communicate, then I can influence people. Because a lot of people are looking for people to influence them, right? Uh, though we are all created as leaders, uh, it takes something from everybody to step up to that leadership position more people looking for people to 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 push them than people, those that 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 step up come out above the head and make it in life that's why not everybody can be rich right it's not god it's not god that's keeping you from being rich. It's, it's 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 the inability of people to step up to the game of their life that's what keeps them poor right and sometimes it respect what you the opportunity you create for them they are they seem to prefer being rich, right? You know, because I get surprised, you know, it takes me a lot to do some of this as I do. And some people that I know are poor, some people I know that are wretched, some people I know that are going through um, uh, hard times, you will expect that they would they would do something about their life who want to get better, but they never come. They never take the opportunity. And somehow they think that God is just going to come and meet them, you know? You get, the Bible says, God is not mine. Whatsoever a man sows, that will he reap. Not going to get rich. We don't do what rich people do. Rich people take the time to develop themselves, right? And, you know, uh, it, it, it brings up the word uh, glossophobia, right? It is a fear of public speaking. Like Elias said, you know, it's popularly said that public speaking ranks, uh, the fear of public speaking ranks up there as one of the biggest fears of people, probably next to death itself, you know, that, it, yeah, just like any other fear can become, you just that like, you have it and you walk at it. Really, you know, uh, it's the simple thing for public speaking, you know, and this from the, I was talking about this, I can't remember her name right now. You know, the reason why people fear uh, speaking is because they are too focused on themselves. You, you because they take themselves too serious, right? If you, if you, if you, if you go of this intent of being a blessing, of the intent of adding something to the people you are speaking to, you will not think about yourself. 
the fear of public speaking what? The fear of public speaking comes from focus. All I'm there about is how I'm going to perform. Oh, they're going to see me. Oh, this, this. You're going to have fear of public you're going to have fear of public performance. The way to overcome public performance fear is to think about influencing people, making people better. When you start thinking how to public speaking dies naturally, focus on yourself. If you take the focus off about that. All right. Obviously, and with communication, it, it, it takes because onto the venture, they're not going to gain anything. They're just going to ask them what to say, right? Uh, you're not a person you've always been. If you want something to solve, you want better out of life. And uh, I'm like I mean, but I'm going to read one more. It says, when we allow all fact, if allow fit to come out, wants to speak or communicate through us, so you will give out through us, then we are all unique. Have the next experience same as the way you have the emotions that go with it, you know, uh, education, right? Um, uh, we have to explain, right? If you're not a man again, a fear that's supposed to be blessed by your ministry, by your person, and not able to be blessed by your person because you didn't stand up to the plate to the challenge of life, you know. And uh, so it says, many times when you speak up and display leadership in the face of adversity, others try to compel you to use their platforms and microphones. While you should weigh the benefits of us in the mic someone else lends you, you should also be unafraid to politely, politely decline. And keep talking about here, it was using the example of David. And now David won't uh, dress in his own armor to fight God that weight, right? But David wasn't used to that, you know, so he had to politely decline. And use what he is used to. I remember the one time I was going to minister somewhere, and all I was thinking about is TDJ, and I was trying to speak like TDJ, right? As uh, someone once said, that is an affront against God. It's a sin. To be like someone that you are not is a sin. It's telling God that he, did, he didn't do a good job. They're saying God prefers to be TDJ, I prefer to be whoever, other than the person you have created. Right, God knows what He was doing. We are all wonderfully created. Right, it's no use trying to be someone else because the the people, the audience that God has designed our lives to minister to. Right, He has fashioned us in a way that we can minister to them, and we can we can only be at the best as ourselves, not as someone else. Right. So when we're communicating, yes, we can learn one or two things from people, but we must be we must be faithful to who we are, because the power of our message is found in who we are, not who we are not, right? And so, it goes on to say that when you have a God-given message to deliver. It may require you to risk stepping on a few toes, decline what others offer, disappoint them, and potentially hurting their feelings and lose their support. You know, uh, if you stand firm on what God wants you to do, sometimes it means you have to uh, you have to go against established norms, right? Uh, and and I, I see that. I mean, only this afternoon, I, I, I see that. You know, but you, you you just have to be sure in what God has given to you, right? And and, and stay by it, right? It doesn't matter who, who, who feels hard or who, who doesn't understand you, right? You know, we're here to do the will of God, not not please people or make people happy, right? Uh, so he goes on and he says, if you want to overcome your fears of speaking in front of others, if you want to gain experience in order to develop as a communicator, then start where you are, right? Just like I said, you have to start where you are, not where you're not. You have to build from where you are, 
right? Any building want to build a skyscraper, no matter how high, you have to start where you are. You have to dig into the ground and get the right foundation, right, before you go high up, right? <clears throat> and it says, and be who you are. Be true to who you are, where you came from, and what you know. Don't try to be anyone else. Don't try to use words with eight syllables uh, just to impress. Don't act like you know what your audience has been through. If you don't, be yourself and be real, right? In communication, it's important to know that you're not there to impress people, right? You're there to express, right? And, and also impact. It's not about impressing people because when you're trying to impress, you, your message gets lost. You water down the message. Uh, communication is not about impressing. It's about impacting. It's about expression, right? And, and that's critical. And uh, you may always feel a little nervous or excited, proud to speak it in front of a group, but you don't have to be held hostage by fear. So let's consider four different kinds of fearful reaction you may experience when speaking and how to overcome them. So it's going to run us through about four different possible fears it will experience when you want to go speak. I mean, it's a normal thing. You don't 100% get over that possible uh, body reaction to, to public speaking, right? Like I said, one of the prayer meeting, right? You know, typically my whole self, maybe I would have, it wouldn't be a problem, but here was I, you know, still trying to get myself together and I'm supposed to lead a prayer meeting. Right, and I began to call several people. But as I prepared, I also also listened to my heart, you know. And 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 by the time I was done going the way I felt led to take it, you know, what by the time I led the prayer meeting, the people prayed like they'd never prayed before, such that the keyboardists came to me and said. <laughs> what I did was so simple, yet the people there was a there was a spirit of prayer that came over the congregation, right? It's because I, I God put me in a place where I stopped focusing on myself. It had to be that I was focusing on the, his will, first of all, and the people being blessed, the people being being able to enter into his presence. When the focus was right, the Holy Spirit came and took over. Right, so you know, so that's probably that's probably one one of the things that needs to be. But let's look at uh, what TDJ says about about the fears. And so the first one he talks about is uh, is he says it's simply a physical and physiological response, right, of the body, right. So he says overcoming your physiological reaction. Uh, to fear of speaking requires eating the pause button of your body's natural response. All right, all right. And, and it's pretty much just to relax, all right. Uh, this is something that happens to every top performer about when you're about to perform, right? It probably happens to everybody, you know? You, you, we call it having butterflies in your stomach, right? You feel maybe a bit anxious, tensed, you know, whatever, you know. One of the one of the ways top performance overcome this physiological uh, challenge to, to entering to to uh, to going into the place of performing or public speaking or doing an event is the way you interpret the feelings in your body. If you interpret it as fear, that is what you're gonna get. If you interpret it as anxiety, that's what you're gonna get. Top performance rather will call it what they want it to be. They will whatever you define it as, that is the power that will take a hold of you, right? So, so it's one of the things uh, uh, Bandura teaches. Uh, uh, in line with self-efficacy, right? Because for you to go perform, and you, if your physiological being is beginning to act in a way that's kind of getting you anxious, what you need to you need to rightly define that feeling and say, "Wow, I'm feeling so 
ready to get this done. All right, my body is showing the fact that it's ready to go. It's important the way you define the way you, your body is feeling because whatever you define it as, that's what's going to take a hold of you, right? Uh, TDJ writes and says the mental and psychological aspects of fear must also be addressed before you step up to the mic, all right? And that mental and psychological as if is all a function of self-talk. What are you saying to yourself? Uh, how are you defining the, you know, the way your body is uh, is acting. Different top performers do different things. Tony Robbins will typically say words of affirmation, right, before going into public speaking. And he does that for every single time he has to do. It's the way of getting his mental and psychological being in the right state to minister, right? So he, he has words of affirmation that he says to himself, just get himself in the me right mental and physiological state, right? Or, or psychological state rather, not physiological. Physiological, you have to take care of your body, right? To get yourself in the right mental and psychological state. And a lot of people like Tony will, 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 do, will say affirmation words to themselves, right? Well, you have to speak to yourself positively. You have to speak what you want because whatsoever you speak is what you get, right? And... Uh, CDJ says, finally, you may discover your fears also include spiritual dimension to it, right? Especially if you are ministering and all of that. I will challenge you to go back to what inspires or believes you and ministers to you, right? So, like I said about leading the prayer meeting, you know, it's about for me, I had to go to God, right? That meeting, not yet trying to show off myself. was important was me leading the people into the presence of God. So I had to go back to God to hear from God how he would have me lead the prayer meeting. And once I got that, the spirit of prayer came upon the congregation. He rightly positioned so that God can do his own thing. 